So Golang is a pretty awesome programming language and we all know that. But more importantly, the community is very active and extremely tight-knit. A lot of products have been built with Golang that are completely open source right now and are very popular. In this video, I'll take you over 10 such open source Golang projects that are very popular and very widely used. Now, if you're new to Golang or this channel, I just want to let you know that there are more than 100 videos on Golang on this channel and there are more than 30 projects on different playlists on this channel that you can start building right now and learn Golang by building real world projects. So now let's talk about the open source projects. The first one that I want to talk about is Prometheus. It's extremely widely used and very popular. It's a cloud monitoring system and an events tracking and alerting system. So let's imagine you've deployed some software onto the cloud. Now you want to know if it's down or it's up or it's live, right? It could be on QA, dev or production but mostly for production uh, level applications, you'd want to be aware if it's down or alerted if, it's, if it has gone down, right? So this is where you'd use a monitoring service like Prometheus, which, which is always giving you real time monitoring that you know these are the number of provisions of resources that you have provisioned, this is the memory that's being consumed, or things have gone down and these are the exact problems. So you would want a complete log and complete monitoring, right? So Prometheus is very effective in that, very simple to use, I use it very heavily. Yeah, the second one is by a company called HashiCorp, which uses Golang a lot, and it's called Terraform. So Terraform is an infrastructure as a code application where you just write some configurations for the number of cloud resources that you want or the, cloud, the provisioning of the cloud resources. And it doesn't matter whether you're using it for AWS, GCP, or Azure. You just write the similar uh, cloud configuration in Terraform, and it will convert all of that, that into actual cloud resources and provision those resources for you on that particular cloud by using the AWS or GCP or Azure API uh, in the background. Uh, it's uh, very popular, very really, uh, heavily used by a lot of companies. And if you've heard about Terraform, you know that it's very, very heavily in demand, right? So it's a very great technology. It's a cloud automation technology and both Prometheus and Terraform are used um, in the cloud, in the infrastructure level uh, stage. Now, uh, Consul, which is, the th which is a third open source technology, is again by HashiCorp. HashiCorp has many technologies, like so Consul is very, very popular again, but it's not as widely used as, let's say, Prometheus or uh, Terraform. But the companies that use Consul swear by it. It's like an API gateway, but for distributed infrastructure and distributed systems. So, like I said, you know, uh, few companies use it, but the companies that use it are um, like they swear by it, they're heavily dependent on it. Uh, the fourth one is Cockroach DB. So the, the reason they've named it Cockroach is that it's extremely reliable and extremely persistent. It keeps coming back. And so that's why it says that they've built it for speed scale and most importantly for survival. It, it's a distributed SQL database that keeps coming back. It's completely built with Golang. Very um, effective technology, uh, very, uh, you know, for mission critical applications, this is the one that you should be choosing. Then comes InfluxDB. So a lot of uh, applications have come around um, data analytics, data science, machine learning, and all of them have to use uh, many times a time series database to see how data has been changing over a period of time. And this is where you'd want to store that in a time series database like InfluxDB. Uh, a lot of stock market information is also stored in time series databases. So InfluxDB is quite popular there, completely built on Golang again, very popular. Uh, a lot of data scientists already know about it. So the sixth uh, program is very popular, Docker. Everybody has heard about it. So if you're a software developer, you know what Docker is. Docker helps you to basically continuize your applications <coughs> and you get consistent, reliable performance uh, on your machine and it will work reliably and similarly on the cloud as well because you're continuizing your applications with that same environment, right? So Docker is very popular again. Kubernetes, so once you build all these Docker containers, you want to orchestrate them or you want to you know, uh, basically bring them up at the same time or down at the same time, or you want to have some kind of communication between them. You want, basically want to orchestrate Docker containers, right? So this is where Kubernetes is heavily used. Kubernetes is a like container orchestration technology, completely again built with Golang. So our eighth open source project is Fine, F-Y-N-E. It's a cross-platform and multi-platform framework. So you can build desktop and mobile apps by using the same code base. You can draw a parallel with Flutter. So it's almost like Flutter because you can build desktop and mobile apps using the same code base, but it's obviously not as popular as, as Flutter or React Native. I've never used it, but I've heard many people are using it and I would like to try it. So if you'd like to give it a go, go ahead and try it out. Um, so like I said, you know, it's 
for cross-platform and multi-platform uh, apps that you can build using Fine. Now, Mattermost is very popular. Mattermost is um, basically Slack, but built with Colang. It's, I think it's on GitLab, if I'm not wrong, you can go and check out the repository, check out the code, check out the uh, people who are building it, you can talk to them. And it's a huge community and everybody working with Golang basically knows about Mattermost because it's one of the most popular uh, projects being built with Golang. The last up is dgraph. dgraph is a database which uses GraphQL query language. So uh, imagine you had SQL database, it uses the structured query language, that's why it's called the SQL database, but what if there was a GraphQL first database? So that's what dgraph is, completely built with Golang again. GraphQL, as you know, is exploring these days, it's uh, the new craze, and so that's why people would want to use uh, GraphQL and a GraphQL database. So this is why it's uh, quite popular. So these are these were our 10 um, very famous open source projects, so let me go through them again. Prometheus Cloud Monitoring, Terraform, Infrastructure as Code, Very Easy, Cloud Automation, Console, API Gateway, CrossDB, Very Resilient uh, Database, Persistent Database, and InfluxDB is time series database for data science applications. Docker, we all use it every day, containerizing applications. Kubernetes, uh, everybody uses it a lot. Container orchestr or orchestration. Everything has been built with Golang, by the way. Right, fine, like almost like Flutter, Mattermost is Slack, built with Golang and dgraph is a GraphQL first database. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Do subscribe to this channel because I come up with awesome content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.